Hi, I'm Sue. And I'm Mel, and this is Manifesting with Mel and Sue. Yes, and today we are going to talk about a lot of different techniques that you can use to manifest or change your reality. Um, there are a lot of techniques out there, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm pretty sure I've tried all of them <laughs> because I like to cover my bases um, and also like I like to experiment and find what works for me. Exactly. So we're going to talk about the different ones that we're aware of and we hopefully will remember more mm. while we're recording today, but if not, we'll talk about them in future episodes. But so what, what is your favorite technique, Mel? Let's start there. I think probably my favorite one is affirmations because it's, it's so easy. Like you can do it anywhere, anytime, like you're driving, you could, like it's just something you can take with you and do anywhere. So what's an affirmation? An affirmation is basically um, a thought or a sentence that you repeat over and over again. So um, if you're trying to be more, um, I guess, popular, you would say, I'm the most popular person. I'm so popular. I'm the most popular person. I'm so popular. And you just say it over and over again. You loop it. That's a um, technique is looping um, where you say the same affirmation over and over and over again. Um, and so basically it's just... Um, a sentence or a couple of sentences. Yeah. Um, I like that. Mine would be, I'm everyone's favorite person and everyone loves me. Exactly. Uh, and I love it when you tell me that you're favorite person, that I'm your favorite person. <laughs> and of course you're mine too, because I'm repeating your affirmations to you. <laughs> exactly. Not intentionally. I know, just, right? I love you so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so affirmations are great because what they're doing is they're replacing your old thoughts with the thoughts that you want to have. Um, they're living in the end of what you want your new reality to be. Mm -hmm. And they're reprogramming your subconscious mind through repetition. Exactly. So really simple. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, so there are, there's another aspect of affirmations. Affirmations, we could go, we could go on all day about just that technique, but mm -hmm. We're going to get to all of the, all the techniques that we have um, planned. But another uh, aspect of affirmations would be questions. So if you are affirming all day, I am the most popular person. What, I'm, I'm so popular. I'm the most popular person. But then you're like, why am I not hearing from anybody? Why am I not popular yet? What am I doing right there? <laughs> you're contradicting what you're affirming for. You're, right. you're flipping your story to that you're not popular right but I'm, i specifically i'm asking a question that's mm -hmm. contrary to it um so you can have affirmations that are questions aren't they called um, ask or may ask formations so you, how you say it? there's a couple of terms so i've i've seen ask formations i've also seen affirmations with yes. an o instead of an i affirmations um so basically instead of saying why, why do people not like me? Why am I not popular? You can say, why am I so popular? And then why is everybody blowing up my phone? Why, why am I busy every so night? <laughs> why does everyone love me so much? Why this am I so, so popular so crazy. Now? Why? <laughs> yeah. And so the great thing about asking questions like that is you don't necessarily have to believe it in the way that you would such a definitive statement, but your subconscious is like, why is this happening? Well, I'm going to show you the proof of why. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so affirmations are really fun. So let's talk about some of the other techniques. Tell everybody about, this is one of the ones that I absolutely love. And you, I, I feel like you perfected this one, but talk about remote seduction because we're kind of like. <laughs> okay. So we're jumping ahead here. Before we get to that, can we talk about sats? Because yes. um, that's kind of the basis for remote seduction. So sats is an acronym for state akin to sleep. And this is a technique that um, Neville Goddard talked about. State akin to sleep means that you lay down or sit and you close your eyes and you get into a very relaxed state by taking some deep breaths. Um, and maybe it could be right before you go to bed at night. So you are on the verge of sleep, but you're conscious enough that you can imagine. And what you want to do is you want to imagine a scenario that implies that you have the reality that you want. So if, for example, I'm manifesting a dream job and I want to um, have this specific job at a specific company, I'm going to imagine myself going into work 
at this company, at this, at this place, and I'm going to imagine my office and my title sitting on my desk and people coming in and asking me to do the work that I want to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to replay that over and over again in my mind as I fall asleep. And what that does is that's impressing the subconscious in when it's already very relaxed. And the, and the point of that is that your conscious mind isn't so active with doubts. Like, oh no, how could you ever get a job like that? You don't have the experience. Like those thoughts are basically shut off because they're sleepy now. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're just repeating the scene in your mind again through repetition that that is your experience and you're impressing your subconscious. And then if you do that night after night, eventually you're going to find that that's the case. Okay. So, and I feel like visualization definitely ties in with that. Yeah. So visualization is the same thing as sex. It's just, you don't, you're not necessarily in the state of kind of sleep. So you're, maybe you're not lying down, you're not meditating. So here's an example of something I manifested using visualization. I needed new tires for my car. Um, my tires are bald and I didn't want to spend any money or have money to spend the tires. And so one day I'm coming home and I'm just thinking about the, the awesome new tires that are on my car and imagining, you know, I'm not meditating or sleeping or anything, but I'm just imagining feeling the tread on my tires, like looking at how much tread I have and how great my new tires are and feeling the tread. And I don't even think I did it like more than once or twice. But seriously, within a week, I had new tires. Within a couple of days, I want to say it was two or three days, um, my ex uh, reached out to me, said that he'd won a bunch of money and wanted to give me money if I needed some. And I was like, you know what? I really need some new tires. <laughs> so I accepted the free money and bought myself some tires. And like, I never could have imagined how. So when you are visualizing or doing sats, you don't worry about how you're going to get the thing that you want. You just imagine that you have it now. Yeah. And that's, then, that's called, um, the ends in living the, in the living end. Living in the end. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Cause I never would have imagined that he would win $5,000 that week. Like <laughs> how I, there's no way I would have imagined that. Um, I, I feel like most of the time it's usually something that we can't imagine. Like right. we never would have fathomed. And that's why in manifesting and conscious creating, you don't think about the how because you essentially you're going to limit yourself to um, whether or not you're going to get it or how long it's going to take because right. now you're you're concerned with the how. And and another thing that happens when you're concerned with the how is that you're checking the 3D a lot. Yes, um, yes, because you want to see oh did I do it? Did I do it? Right. Now you're questioning the manifestation itself, and you're it's basically like creating a roadblock. Like the way I see it is when you're trying to manifest something, you're constantly checking the 3D. You're checking to see if it worked. It's like, it's like no, the, the fan's still spinning. Look, it's still going. So yeah. it didn't work. I didn't turn it off. Like, yeah, you turned it off. It's just still spinning right now. <laughs> I mean, I've had times when I've shut off a ceiling fan and I'm like, did I shut it off? Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's slowing down. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, um, I think that that's definitely a great way to explain that. Yeah. And so now that we've covered sats and visualization, we can get to remote seduction, which is such a fun topic. It is. Um, so this is something that I discovered when I was trying to manifest an SP. Um, and this is, it's basically visualizing yourself in a rom very romantic specific scenario with a person to the point where you're imagining touching um, smelling, the more senses that you involved in any visualization exercise or SATS exercise, the more senses that you involve um, imagining the touch, the taste, the smell, um, the, what other senses are there? The sounds. Yes. Um, with the more senses you that see. you involve, the more sensory vividness, as Neville would call it, that you put into your scene, the more it impresses on the subconscious because your subconscious thinks it's actually happening now. Mm -hmm. So going back to remote seduction, you're imagining yourself in a romantic situation with a person in very vivid detail. And one of the things that happens if you do this enough I want to be very delicate with this topic because it's <sighs> it's a delicate topic. Okay, so I I don't know if I want to get into my experiences, but we'll just say that I've 
there was a period of time a good three or four months when I was practicing remote seduction several times a day every day on a specific person and I was not I was not in contact with this person at that time but this was someone who was a friend um, in the 3d um, not in my mind because what we were doing in my mind was not. <laughs> But anyway, um, when I saw that person again, the look that he gave me, <laughs> I will never forget to this day. Because I, my feeling in that moment was not, was not, oh my God, it worked. It was like, okay, he's creeping me out. Because <laughs> I remember you messaging me after that. I was like. He's never looked at me that way, and it's really kind of creepy. Um, so I was like, holy shit, like, he felt everything. And so the idea behind remote seduction is, like, if you're really in-depth, in detail in what you're imagining, and in a really meditative, relaxed state of mind, theoretically, they can feel it as it's happening or soon after. Um, I don't, again, I don't know how much I want to say, but let's just say that I did that a lot, and it got to the point where I felt like I was receiving energy in return, <laughs> which got to be very intense. <laughs> um, so I don't know that I would encourage remote seduction because I don't feel like it's really living in the end, but it can be a really fun thing to practice. It's definitely a fun thing to practice. I don't think I've been quite as successful as you in that, but I've had my, my successes here and there. I also didn't practice it. I wasn't disciplined enough to practice it the way. I mean, it does take yeah. time. And I was just like daydreaming at work. <laughs> she's she's far more disciplined in all of this than I am. Or obsessed. <laughs> at least I was at the time. I'm not anymore, thank God. Um, but it was a fun experiment. So that's remote seduction. 